Okay, you guys ask me all the time about what these beam jobs are that I'm doing. Perfect example, we're in a basement and we want the maximum ceiling height. So we're gonna get rid of this drop beam and make it a flush beam. So step one is always gonna be measurement. And by measurement, I mean I need to measure each joist to make sure that the bolts that I'm using for the flush packing land in the voids and not where a joist hanger is. So because of the depth of the beam and the minimal space that I have to work with, this has to be at one continuous length. So I have 28 feet and it's gonna land on two columns in the end, 22 foot to the first, and then another six to the second column. So here's an example of the perpendicular beam that I've already drilled out. And you can see I've located my bolt holes so that they don't interfere with the joists above. Ouch, this really hurts. So once the beam is packed, now you can see we cut back all the joists so they're straight. We trim all the nails and then that allows the beam to sit tight to the bottom of the subfloor. So once the beams are oh, in. That's So once the beams are in, basically what we're gonna do is hanger the joists, and then you're gonna install your columns, weld them up, and then we're done. Right now, you'll see we're at the drilling phase. So we start with a bare beam, and I need to drill between each joist cavity. So I'm doing this because the packing, which is the wood pieces that fill out the beam that we put our hangers on, need to be bolted to the beam. So I'm using a magnetic drill, and you can see I have lines and I have X's. So the X's are my drill holes, and then the lines represent the joists. So I need to drill between the joists because I don't want the bolt holes to intersect with the hangers. So right now I'm using the DeWalt FlexVolt Mag Drill. That white fluid is actually not milk. It's a liquid oil emulsion, so that's used to cool and lubricate the bit. I'm drilling it out at three quarters of an inch um, diameter because I'm using half inch bolts and I end up drilling through the packing, which is the wood, with a 5 8 auger bit. So right after I drill through the beam, I'm going to um, attach the first layer of packing directly to the beam. So I use a powder actuated tool, which is sort of like a gun but it's shooting a hardened nail. So I'm shooting that two by eight directly to the beam. And then sometimes I need to add another piece of plywood in between the two layers so that my final layer ends up flush with the outer uh, flanges. So in this clip, I'm using a DeWalt 20 volt nailer and I'm shooting my second layer on. So now I'm just using standard framing nails. So I haven't drilled through any pieces yet. You see I'm using wedges here. I'm actually wedging my outermost layer um, towards the bottom flange because I want the bottom in full contact so that there's no shifting once I load the beam. So I know we're going pretty fast here, but this is the slightly longer version. Now I flip the beam over. I'm drilling through the back of the hole that I previously made through both layers of packing because I need to locate those bolt holes through the packing. And then you're going to see what happens next. We have to flip the beam over. So we're using the excavator and we're flipping the beam over because this one's pretty heavy. And I'm using spray paint here because I'm marking all the holes on the top because now I need to attach the other layer of packing. So this is the powder gun again, and I'm using inch and a half power point nails, and then I'm shooting my uh, plywood in between the two layers to build out my packing. This I'm just using inch and a half hanger nails just because I had the gun handy and it's um, I'm not trying to shoot into the steel just yet. So we're just laminating the second layer of plywood on. And then from here, I'm gonna put my final layer again, wedge it and shoot it in with uh, the framing nailer. So that's just standard three and a quarter inch framing nails. I'm actually not shooting straight down, I'm shooting on a slight angle because I don't wanna hit the steel just yet. So this is the wedging phase. I'm wedging it so that the bottom of that packing is in full contact with the flange. And then you see here, I'm shooting on a slight angle so that I don't uh, bottom out the nails. And then what I'm gonna do is flip the beam upright again. And then I'm drilling through both layers now. So I had my holes previously drilled so I can use those as my locators. And now I'm drilling through the other two layers of packing. So now I'm drilling like completely through the beam. This creates the path for the bolts. So here I'm making my bolts. This is all thread. And I always chop my bolts up from all thread because then I don't have to carry a bunch of different size bolts on my, um, on my job, I just bring all thread and then I can just custom make all my lengths. So I find that, you know, yes, there's a little bit of manufacturing that has to happen here, but the time it takes, I can pump out 50, 60 bolts in a matter of minutes, instead of having to stock all these different sizes and deal with the um, added length. I'm just stocking all thread, washers and nuts. So it's all the same material, grade five zinc, uh, plated all thread. And then here I'm threading those new bolts that I've made now. 
the all thread sections through. And once they pop through, we add our washers and then we cinch up everything. So I'm dropping washers in place here and then you see I'm throwing the washers on, throwing the nuts on, hand tightening just to spin everything close. And then I'll jump on it with, uh, this is a mid torque from a Tabo HPT. Extremely nice impact driver, or sorry, impact gun. And then we get back inside, we need to finish prepping the beam pocket. So for this, we end up trimming all of the uh, nails or screws through the subfloor. Sometimes we use a grinder, but in cer certain uh, tight spots, we use a carbide tipped multi-tool blade. And that allows us to make, uh, well here's I'm making a pocket to get into the wall. So I need to have four inches of bearing in uh, uh, foundation. So it's a quick beam pocket in a block wall. And then under that gets packed with non-trink grout. So we'll explain that a little bit later. So now I have the completed beam on the beam dolly. We're just maneuvering it into the house. We happen to uh, have a window open here because of the underpin. And then once we get the beam into the basement, I move the beam around using a series of uh, chain hoists. So I find this much easier than trying to drag it around by hand. I'll just sling the chain hoist across the joist and then drag the beam through the house. And then I lift it up into the pocket. We throw our uh, jack post underneath. Level off everything. That's your chance to level the um, framing system. So the subfloor, like this is your final chance before you start hangering. Once we're level with our beam and subfloor where we want it, we start hanging the joist. So I'm just using an uh, inch and a half metal connector nails here and then I'm shooting each hanger in. I put a little dab of um, construction adhesive PL at the bottom of each hanger and that prevents squeaking if there's any um, shrinkage later on which we really won't have because these are older joists but it's typically done with new joists. Shoot your hangers in and uh, put your columns in on either end and then that basically wraps up a flush beam.